Hello, here you can see some beautiful blue elemental liquid oxygen. And here you can see another element that really loves oxygen, which is phosphorus. So today you are going to find out what happens when two elements that dearly love each other react together. Because performing such experiments is very difficult, I once again get professional help from Scilabs. You can check out the link to his channel in the description. We performed these experiments with two allotropes of phosphorus, one being red phosphorus, which is a highly flammable powder, and the other being white phosphorus, that self-ignites in air, so it is stored under water. Also, white phosphorus is highly toxic, and liquid oxygen becomes very dangerous when mixed with anything even remotely flammable. So you should definitely refrain from repeating anything you see in this video. If your goal is to stay alive. To start, we cut a rather small piece of white phosphorus and dropped it into liquid oxygen to see <laughs> if it reacts on contact. Yeah, and yet. Because when mixing cesium metal, which is another element that can self-ignite in air, with liquid oxygen in another video, it blew up immediately. But for white phosphorus, sadly nothing happened. Maybe because it was covered in water. When the reaction doesn't start in chemistry, it usually helps to give it a little push. So I touched it with a glowing splint, not expecting a lot to happen. We all ended up being quite surprised by the violence of the reaction. The reaction produces diphosphorus pentoxide, which is much more stable than the individual elements and it would require a lot of energy to reverse this reaction. Now because this was so much fun, we scaled up this reaction by a lot using half a stick of white phosphorus. To light it, we used a remote igniter because we expected a much more violent reaction. It was however not that bad really, and a lot of white phosphorus seemed to survive the liquid oxygen calmly burning at the end. So we repeated the experiment in order to verify the results. <laughs> this time the white phosphorus stick turned into a meteorite which looked really cool, but overall it was pretty much the same. From this we conclude that the size of the explosion is rate limited by the surface area of the white phosphorus. In order to circumvent this problem, we moved on to red phosphorus, which comes as a dry powder because it will not self-ignite in air, unlike white phosphorus. We started with quite a decent amount of it, once again lighting it with the remote igniter. Also das war viel. Papa. 
It produced quite a considerable bang, which the camera recording can never properly convey. Being satisfied with the results, we scaled up the reaction to about twice the scale. Alter, bist du durch? Ja. Da soll auch noch Sauerstoff rein, ne? Elias verantwortungslos, sein Urgroßvater. Oh, fuck. <lacht> Das ist ein großartiges Which produced a significant crater in the sand. It also covered our camera equipment and tripods with sand. To demonstrate the extreme violence of the reaction, we repeated this reaction in a metal bucket. Ich glaube, das ist schon so an der Grenze der Legalität, oder? This time we could hear the bang about three times from the echo it produced, which was quite fascinating. So after digging a while we eventually found it. Or at least parts of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> ich hab, ich hab ihn gefunden. <laughs> As a bonus, we also tried what happens when you ignite powdered sulfur with liquid oxygen to see if a less flammable element will also react so violently. Oh! However, it just produced a flame and a lot of toxic SO2 gas, so we weren't too keen on repeating this. So now you know what happens when elements that dearly love each other react. Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>